Hello and welcome to the Okie Outdoor Gear Review. My name is Roy. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at a gasification stove uh, that I got a little while back. Um, this is the, and I'm, I'll, I'm hoping I pronounce this right, Lixada, L-I-X-A-D-A, -A, uh, gasification stove. Um, these are really nice uh, natural fuel. Uh, so what that means is you're basically going to use twigs, sticks, wood. Uh, you also can use wood pellets uh, for these stoves. It, they work really efficient on wood pellets. And sometimes I, I do carry some wood pellets with me and use on these. Um, this... Uh, was bought, actually my wife bought this for me. She knew I wanted one and, and she got me this one. Um, there is a Facebook page called Kick-Ass Deals. Uh, and you can basically join this, this Facebook page. And what it is, is it's just a bunch of people that uh, scour Amazon and all these other websites, walmart.com and they look for these huge discounts that are given for like, uh, I'm assuming basically like overstocked items. Um, some of this stuff, if you catch it in time, it's free. They give that big a discount for stuff. Uh, the, these typically range, I would say 15 to, I wouldn't really pay more than, you know, 20, 25 bucks for something like this. But most of them are, I believe, under $20 on, on Amazon. Uh, at this moment uh, but I think when it was all said and done I think she paid like maybe like 10 bucks for this if that uh, I don't really know for sure but I like this little stove now this is a knockoff of a knockoff I'm sure of a knockoff so I can't recall and I'll put it in the video the name of the the company that orig originally I think designed this and I want to say it was a kind of a craft company. Uh, it was bushcraft something. I can't remember. I'll, I'll, I'll put that in the video um, that originally came up with this design and it's been knocked off by several uh, different companies. This is a, I'm sure a, a, a China brand uh but the quality is, it's good. Um, I know Solo uh, has a version of this, uh, but like I said, the original, I believe, maker of this design, a small bushcraft uh, company. Uh, so basically, th this is the, the, the pack, pack size of it. Um, I would say it's, like five inch in diameter by maybe two and three quarters tall. That might be three inches tall. Uh, the little bag that it comes in, I like this bag. This this bag is, it's tough. It's, it's high quality. The stitching's good. Uh, the pull cord on it, it, it's a little small, but it, it hasn't failed yet. I've had this for probably a year now. Uh, the little pull clasp on it works well um the product fits in the, in the bag easily the opening is more than enough large enough and you could also put a few other items in there if you want to put some fire starters or you know your whatever method of making fire you're going to use you could put that in there too um so you you this is how it basically packs down inside that carry case so I'll lay out the components of the stove uh, here on the table. So you have five components to the stove. <coughs> Excuse me, um, just a little under the weather. So you have your, your bottom ring, this would go on the ground or your rock or, or whatever. And then your, your combustion, your gasifying chamber 
This is a gasification stove. And what the, the way these are designed is, and they're, once you get them going, unless you're using damp wood, they're, they're pretty much smokeless. Uh, so, you know, if you're out and about and you don't want to be detected, they're not going to create a lot of smoke unless you put a lot of, you know, wet materials down in there. Um, but basically how it works is uh, it reburns the exhaust from fire. So your, your, all your combustibles that are being burnt, it reburns them and sends them through these little channels that you can see here. And just a little bit, we'll, we'll get a fire going in it and I'll, I'll show you up close. Um, so that gasification chamber goes right on top of that, that ring like that. Then your little ash catcher tray slips down in there. Now th this has got some soot, so it kind of takes a little push to get it down in there. Um, then your top ring sets on top of that and it has these little legs for your skillet or your cup, whatever you're, you know, cooking with. <coughs> now, an another little feature I liked about this one, I, I haven't seen something like this with all of them, is this little, little bitty bowl. You, get that? you can set it right here on top. Like that. And you can use that for solid fuels or alcohol. So you have three methods of using this stove. Um, you know, now if, if you uh, were just going to use it as an alcohol stove, you could leave the ash, the ash bin and the bottom ring at home just to make it more compact. <clears throat> and then you would basically just have the three components. Uh, I, as you can tell, I haven't used it with solid fuels or alcohol yet. Uh, but yeah, that's the stove. So <clears throat> basically what you would do, let me get a cup out here. You'd start your fire in there and get it going and you can put your cup on there boil your water you know cook whatever cooking orifice that you're you're wanting to use uh, whether it be a skillet or anything like that. this will hold uh, a larger uh, in uh, diameter uh, cook pot or whatever you just have to kind of be careful, um, but it will hold it. Um, I wouldn't say put a big like kitchen skillet on it and walk away from it because the handle might cause a, a balance issue. Um, but uh, but yeah, you basically start your fire in there uh, and uh, get it going and, and you cook. And it's got this little opening here on the top uh, where you can feed twigs or wood pellets or whatever, you know, uh, if your pot's still on there, you can put a stick in there. What I tend to do is just move my pot so whatever I'm cooking doesn't fall over and I'll, I'll put some more fuel in there. Um, but yeah, this, this thing works great. Um, this saves you from having to, to carry, uh, you know, your canisters. Uh, and then, you know, you don't have to carry your little stove uh, or a canister base. So, you know, it cuts down on weight and you use natural fuels that are around you. Uh, now, the only thing that, I could see causing an issue with this is if you're out and about and it's raining or something or heavy snow and everything's damp. Uh, there are ways of find, finding dry tinder to get a fire started. Um, 
but I, I typically, when I do use this, I'll carry, I'll put some uh, uh, wood pellets in a Ziploc baggie and just kind of use that as a tinder to get a fire started. And you can put, you know, wet wood in there and it'll dry it out. Um, but yeah, uh, it's a great little stove. Um, inexpensive. It's made out of stainless steel. Uh, you can get these in the uh, titanium versions for, you know, more money. Of course, titanium is more expensive. But this thing doesn't weigh anything, even in stainless steel. So, but yeah, it, 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 it works great. It's a cool little stove. Um, I like it. Uh, let me know uh, down in the comments if, if you have one of these, what you think about it. I know some of the versions have legs that kind of flip out so you can put, you know, uh, larger cooking vessels on there. Uh, this for what I typically use it for, um, I have uh, a small cook set here that, that I, I tend to use and it, it's uh, a small diameter, uh, but that'll fit perfectly on there you know a little skillet or you know a little pot like this fits on there great now like i said when you're using something like this of course you're, you're going to have whatever you're cooking in there is weight but and this table's just a, a little uh off angle it'll set on there but there is the potential for that to to fall um so i typically will you know, kind of hold that as I'm cooking, which most of the time you do even in the kitchen when you're cooking. Uh, but if you got something in there cooking that'll add weight to the skillet, it'll probably set on there and you could probably, you know, walk away from it. Uh, I really probably wouldn't recommend using anything larger. I think this is like a six or seven inch diameter cook set. Uh, but you, you could, if, if that's what you had, you could make it work. Um, but yeah, all in all, man, great little stove. It is a knockoff of a knockoff of a knockoff, uh, made in China. So, I mean, if you don't mind that, uh, you know, with the, with the, uh, this trend now that, you know, wish started up, I tried wish I, that was a joke. Uh, it, you never knew what you were going to get or when you would get it, or even if you would get it. Uh, Team U, I'm sure everybody's heard of it. I'll be doing uh, some purchases on Team U and reviewing some of their products also. Uh, but uh, I've seen some cool looking stuff on there. Uh, and from other videos that I've watched, I'm kind of impressed. Uh, I'm sure it majority of that stuff is knockoffs. I know there are some companies that are working with team U to sell their products like i believe it's gear top uh, nature hike is selling some products on there so there are some deals you know in the works with some uh well-known companies uh, because honestly they're the volume of sales that they're doing is just everybody's buying team U. my wife has bought some stuff on team U, and man it was nice stuff and it was crazy cheap uh, so you can, you can find these on there and you could probably get one for probably under 10 bucks. I think I've seen some under $10. Uh, but this, this is a great little stove. It's a great little option. It's lightweight, packs down really small. You don't really don't even notice it in your pack. Um, but yeah, great stove. I like it. Uh, I really have no cons to mention about it. I haven't had any issues with it. This thing will burn hot. Holy cow. These things will, <laughs> these will burn some, some, some wood and it gets extremely hot. Uh, so, you know, if you are using this, just be careful not to touch it till it completely cools down. Uh, but yeah, great little product. Uh, I like it. Let me know what you think about it uh, in the comments. Like I said, please like and subscribe. I will, uh, cut away to setting this up and getting a fire going in it and I'll, I'll show you what everything looks like.
Okay, so what I've kind of done is I've just set up here on the uh, tailgate of the pickup. Um, I uh, have uh, some stuff here that uh, I usually carry with me. Uh, I, I'll carry various fire starters. This is just kind of a, a little homemade kit. Uh, that I uh, have put together. It just has some wood, dry wood shavings, some Vaseline cotton balls, and then I have a uh, piece of tin foil here uh, that I'll use. Right now I'm using the, the lid to this little tin. Uh, works great for keeping the ash on this, or I'll use it so I don't scar the ground or whatever. Uh, but I can also use this large piece of heavy-duty tin foil, and I can also use it as a windscreen. I can pull it around this. So <clears throat> typically, what I do, you got your base, you have your gasification chamber with the ash collector sets down and then the top to your stove. Um, so basically, typically what I'll do, and for just demonstration purposes, I'll just be using my little hand torch. But if you guys have ever used these cotton balls and petroleum jelly, these things will uh, really take a spark uh, from a ferro rod, flint, and still so I'll put my fire starter in there like so take some of these little wood shavings I, I typically I'll, I'll make a little ziploc baggie of these that way if I ever get somewhere and I just for whatever reason just cannot find dry tinder uh, I will uh, at least have a bag to get you know, a couple of fires started. Um, so we'll get that, get that going quick and simple. And then I'll just start feeding that. Now, as this, these gasification stoves start to work, once the, the flame gets built up enough, um, you know, it's creating a little bit of smoke right now. But once the gasification process starts, you'll see that smoke go away. And then you'll also inside, and I'll try to get a, a close up of the, the actual gasification process happening. But in this gas, this gasification, uh, uh, chamber is hollow and it pulls the the fumes from the fire and the smoke back into that chamber and reburns it so it's it's pretty efficient uh, so you get longer burn times for the the amount of you know materials that you'll you're putting in into the stove and just like that with even with these little sticks sticking up you can still set your your pot on there and uh, this one this pot I really like I'll actually be doing a review on this uh, this was a pot set uh, it comes with a lid with a vent and a pour spout so this is good for like you can make macaroni or noodles and, and snap that lid on there and, and you have a strainer built into it also um, and this also come with a, a little uh, uh, ISO fuel uh, uh, burning stove, uh, but I've had this for quite a few years. This will this will be a a separate review. But we're we're basically just gonna get this fire going, and then we're gonna boil some water on this thing just for demonstration purposes. So it's it's pretty windy today. 
um, which that just helps fuel fuel your fire. Um, but as you can see, the the gasification has already started. I don't know if you can see in there uh, on the interior walls those flames uh, shooting out from the side. The gasification has already started. Um, so it works out really well. So like I said, these little stoves are, are extremely, extremely uh, easy to use. Um, I only put, you know, that little bit of material in there to get it started. And I think I've put like four small little pieces of wood. Um, and uh, you basically just, and th this makes for uh, a good little personal fire pit. I've used this for that also. Um, I've been in, in some areas where you can't have open fires, but because it's in this little contained, excuse me, this little contained area, I can actually have a small, small fire. And uh, on some trips, I've used this as a little fire pit because uh, you can just keep feeding that. And uh, this top ring also kind of acts somewhat of a windshield, but you see how the flames are, are blowing around a lot. Um, and then that's where your 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 windscreen can come in handy. Uh, you can take that and set that up and see how that the flames have got more of an upward direction. You could fashion this a little bit better uh, to uh, help out with that. But for demonstration purposes, I'm not really too worried about it. So we'll, we'll go ahead and, and get some water in here and uh, we'll get that, get that boiling. So we're all, I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll try to get the camera down in there. But we're already starting to develop bubbles there. And it's just, it's been on there for like a minute and a half. Of course, there's, there's not, there's only about 10 ounces of water in there. Your boil times are going to increase by the uh, volume of water that you, you have in your pot. But it, it's basically, it's not a rolling boil, but it's, it's right there at the boiling point. So, you know, that just took seconds or not seconds, but minutes, uh, extremely efficient and just five or six small little sticks. And I just picked them up here on the ground and that those five or six sticks will probably give you 15 to 20 minutes of, of cook time. Uh, they're a little damp. So that's why we have the, the smoke, the drier, your wood, uh, you know, the, uh, the less smoke, uh, But typically, I, I don't care if there's a little bit of smoke, um, unless I'm doing some type of stealth camping or something like that and don't, don't want to be found or seen. So you can hear that. That water is right there almost to that rolling boil. So we brought that to a full boil. Uh, my fire pretty much burnt out. Um, so that was close to, I would say 12 minutes of burn time on like five or six small little, you know, four to six inch little sticks, you know, in about three quarter to one inch diameter. Uh, so pretty efficient, you know, so if you can collect a bunch of this, you can have a fire for hours. Of course you have to keep feeding it you know, as you go, but, you know, now you can do your dehydrated meal or make coffee or hot cocoa. And, uh, we'll set this to the side and, uh, yeah. So that's basically, that's the, 
Lexada, Lixada, L I X A D A gasification stove made out of stainless steel. That's the uh, Lixada, Lixada gasification stove, stainless steel, uh, compact, versatile, um, works great. Um, I appreciate you guys joining me today, uh, taking a look at this product. Let me know down in the comments uh, what you think about this. If you own this, let me know what, what you think about it, uh, you know, in your use. Uh, any tips or tricks you have to uh, uh, using it. It's, it's fairly simple. Uh, it's, you know, very friendly or user friendly. Uh, so please like and subscribe this video. It helps the channel. Um, and uh, I can't wait to see you guys on our next adventure and our next gear review. Uh, I appreciate you guys for joining me today. Uh, stay blessed and stay safe.